In this video, we're going to introduce the concept of the half-life. Now, in the previous unit, we introduced chemical kinetics, which is just the study of the rate of reactions, right? How long it takes for reactions to actually occur. Now, the half-life is a very special property within chemical kinetics. And basically, the definition of the half-life is the time that it takes for a reactant to reach half of its initial concentration, right? So as a reaction progresses, however long it takes for a reactant to reach half of its initial concentration, we call that the half-life, right? So the half-life is a time, right? So it's not um, going to be measured in a concentration. It's going to be a specific amount of time in either seconds, minutes, or hours, or, or what have you. Um, let's look at a kind of a visual representation of what the half-life looks like. So if we just take a, a general reaction where we have some reactant A that's being converted to some product B, and let's say that we have this uh, plot of its concentration over time, right? So this blue curve is its concentration decreasing over time as we produce more of the product B. Um, if it's, let's say hypothetically, it's starting at one molar concentration, right? So we have um, uh, one molar concentrated uh, uh, amount of our reactant A. Um, the half-life is going to be the amount of time that it would take for reactant A to go from one molar to 0.5 molar, right? So this um, specific length of time here, right, this gap of time would be considered the half-life. And usually to denote the half-life, we do, we use the uh, notation T sub one half. So you use a little subscript one half in order to denote the time that it takes for the, for the reactant to reach half of its initial concentration, right? So this is the half-life. Pretty simple concept to, to say in words and even to visualize graphically. What does this mean mathematically, right? So what we know is that at T one half, right? So kind of putting this, this definition from uh, being in words into an equation, we know that at T one half, the following statement is true, right? The concentration of our reactant is going to be equal to half of the initial concentration, right? So we'll have A naught over two, right? All this is is just taking what we have in this statement, right? What we see in this chart and putting it into an equation. At T one half, we know that the current concentration of our reactant will be half of its initial concentration. That's just the definition of this. So now how can we take this and be able to get an actual expression where we can calculate the half-life, right? How can we actually calculate T1 half? Well, we can use one of the concepts we talked about in the previous unit, right? The integrated rate law in order to calculate this, right? So we, we have this definition. We can basically use this in the integrated rate law in order to calculate T1 half. So let's do this uh, specifically for a first order reaction, right? So we talked about the first order uh, integrated rate law in the previous unit, right? It had this uh, general form. We've got KT plus LN, the initial concentration, right? So we know that this is our integrated rate law. So what I want to do is take the information that we have here, right? that we know that we're trying to get an expression for T1 half, our half-life. So we want an expression for T1 half. We know that the concentration will be equal to half the initial concentration. So we can actually plug that information into this expression in order to get an explicit expression for the half-life of a first-order reaction. So let's do it. So we know that at, at the half-life, at T1 half, this concentration will be equal to half of the initial. So we plug that in. So we've got half the initial concentration, right, is going to be equal to negative K. And I'm going to specifically put T1 half, right, plus LN A naught. So notice what I did here, right? So at T1 half, we're, we're specifically talking about the half-life. We know that the current concentration is going to be half the initial concentration. So now the only thing that we have to do here is to just isolate T1 half in order to get an explicit expression for the, uh, the half-life for any first-order reaction. So let's do that. So the first thing that I want to do here is just kind of isolate this uh, KT one-half term. So I'm going to have this on this side, so KT one-half. 
And I'm just gonna move everything over, right? So we're gonna have uh, LN A naught, right? Minus LN initial concentration, half the initial concentration, right? So basically all I did was just swing this guy over here and swing this term from the left-hand side to the right-hand side, right? Um, so now we have this expression, right? So what we can do here to isolate uh, T1 half, uh, we can use a logarithmic uh, property, right? So a simple property of logarithms is that if you have ln A minus ln B, you can re-express that as ln A over B, right? So this is a logarithmic property that we're going to exploit here in order to re-express this, uh, this integrated rate law that we have, right? So kt one half is going to be equal to ln the initial concentration of A over half the initial concentration of A. Right, so doing this, we kind of get some simplification here, right? This guy cancels out with the initial concentration that's in the denominator. And then so when we show that algebra, right, we got ln one half kt one half. And so the half-life is just gonna be for a first order reaction, T one half is just simply the natural log of, of one half is just 0 0.693. Uh, and you're just gonna divide that by the rate constant. So this would be the expression for the half-life for a first order reaction. Now keep in mind, is this I can't stress this enough, only for a first order reaction. Right, for any other reaction, we would have to go through this same process, right? Get its integrated rate law, and then from there, figure out the half, right? Uh, so this is only valid for a first order reaction, but if you know that your reaction follows first order kinetics, then you can calculate the half life easily using this expression. Okay, so that's an introduction into the half life uh, and getting the ex explicit expression for the half life of a first order reaction. In the next video, we're going to put this equation to good use and actually start to calculate the half-life of some reactions in example problems.